The harmony to It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing uh, is really fun. It follows, um, the main progression of the song is actually heard in many uh, different styles of music in many different songs, which is this. It's a walking, a descending uh, chromatic against a G minor chord. And I could play a lot of songs that have that. In jazz, it's most commonly heard in Latin jazz in a montuno, something like this. Right, something like that. Um, it's also heard, uh, the Beatles used it in, um, I'm gonna change keys now, but it's, uh, it's this progression for the introduction and part of the theme of their beautiful ballad, uh, Paul's beautiful ballad, Michelle, on the Rubber Soul album. But that first part, and of course it's most famously, let's see. Okay, to Stairway to Heaven. Um, and so really it's just a very useful progression. Uh, you can, you know, blues players might use it in something like Summertime. Let's see. Summertime. Fish are jumping. And sometimes they use it, you know, sometimes they'll even go to the four chord and keep that progression going. So it's really common. And in this case, it's making up uh, the harmony underneath the melody. It don't mean a thing if it. And then, then it continues. Don't got that swing. So you've got. So the bass line is moving all the way down, chromatically, and then boom, back to the root. So how do we do that? Well, I'm just going to keep the first three notes of my G minor chord, what I call my little baby G minor, and baby doesn't mean it's any less valuable or any less important. It just means that it's one of my first G minors I learned, oh, say, half a century ago. So here we go. Here's my little baby G minor, which is still my friend. And now I'm going to put the bass line. So here's how this works chromatically. And now I'm going to the E flat. I could have done something there, but it starts to sound a little thin there. So I put the E flat there and the D there. And then here I go to the G minor. So that's what's happening with the chords. We have G minor, G minor with a major seven, G minor seven, G minor six, E flat seven, D seven, G minor. And by the way, uh, we can also play that in a higher octave so that we'd have this. So I had, again, that's the same thing. And so, uh, and this progression, because it's so common, it's good to have a few different places to play it on the neck. And you should definitely work it through in different keys, because as I said, it happens in so many different styles of music and so many different songs. So that's the, that's the melody for the, I mean, that's the uh, harmony uh, for the uh, A sections. And now let's go to the B section. Uh, it's really pretty simple. We have a 2-5-1 in E flat major. So that would be this. F minor 7, B flat 7, E flat major 7. And you can play it, I play it down here when I'm playing the melody because that's where I'm harmonizing it, but obviously you could play it anywhere. These are different inversions. And those are some, I added a few little colors to them, but that's still all basically 2-5-1 in E flat major. And so I have that 2-5-1, F minor 7, B flat 7, E flat major 7, and then we have um, a 2-5-1 to an F dominant, so G minor, C7, and instead of going to an F major 7, 
that goes to an F dominant, which then leads to a D dominant. And actually in my arrangement, instead of going to a D, which I do sometimes, and sometimes I hit the harmonics for the D, I actually go to the tritone of D, which is his A flat, which is also another way to lead back home to G minor. So for example, if I'm a bass player, I could go, I could go five, one, or I could go flat two, one. So either of those will lead. So I could go or, and they have a lot of similar tones, the um, A flat seven and the D seven. Um, and so uh, this is what's called the tritone, use the A flat, it's a half step above the chord you're going to. A flat seven, half step above of G minor. So here's what the whole song sounds like when I'm just playing chords. No melody, but just a reference for you because you're going to need to know the harmony when we move on to the next segment, which is how I improvise over the song. Okay, so here we go. So I play it nice and slow. Here we go. bridge Okay, so that is the entire song, uh, and um, it's really um, super important when you're working on the harmony. Uh, there, I just played it through, you know, really without any rhythm. Once you get the chords down, try to play it with an actual swing rhythm, as I do it as kind of an, you know, medium up tempo. Uh, it's funny because I do kind of a jazz thing, but I've also played the melody in kind of a. a sort of funky kind of hip-hop thing at points but but try to get a good rhythmic swing happening so that it would sound more like this cut the chord short and staccato get a nice punch So slowly, use all of the tools that True Fire has available. You can slow all of this down. You can use the tab. You can read the music. Whatever works for you, watch my right hand to get into the rhythmic feel that I'm doing. Uh, and take your time working through this. But this is total, total, totally doable. Uh, you know, I think for everyone that's picked up this course. So I, uh, like I said, I hope you enjoy my arrangement and have fun working on it.